excited about doing this video because today I'm going to do an action-packed one where there's a dragonfly on the hunt killing the insect. I'm going to capture that action. Also, I'm going to let you in on some of the secrets of creating art. Louisiana. What an awesome cool place Louisiana is because you've got all these really cool things like alligators, heaps of bird life. In fact anywhere you get around a swamp there's heaps of fun things including dragonflies. So this is the pond hawk or the eastern pond hawk called that because of the way it takes down bugs just like a hawk will take things out of the sky so will this thing and it comes down to the ground to eat and that's what this guy's doing now sitting on my knee and he's eating one of the bugs he's just taken out of the sky man that's cool I have to excuse the spots on my knee I knelt down on some goat weed the males are blue like a powdery blue a little bit of a green face and sometimes the tip of the tails may be a pale yellow the females are bright green, so sexually they're different in colours. I love watching this guy throw his neck back to swallow that food. It's like a croc trying to eat. Anyway, it's a good chance to play with these guys. I mean, they're landing on me like flies in Australia, but they're not normal flies. They're dragonflies, which are way more awesome. So get a quick sketch in. That's what I'm up to right now. The pond hawk has been known to take down insects its own size and sometimes it'll even take out its own species. They'll actually cannibalize each other. And I guess eating takes up a lot of energy which is why they're landing on my knee and my sketch pad to finish their meal. I guess I'd say step one of creating art is to have a theme, have an interest or be inspired by something. I'm inspired by these dragonflies. Step two is to create some reference, gather up some information. Like for example, these guys hunt with their legs. This is why in this sketchbook, I'm actually drawing the legs coming forward to grab an insect. This is part of the sorting out of what I'm going to do as a work of art. Next, and this is very important, a mock-up. Thumbnail sketches, try and work out a composition. And in this I'm drawing some quick, fast lines, energetic lines, looking like action. I want this to have the excitement of a Superman comic, where it's whizzing around really fast and hitting something in the sky. And because it's blue, I thought I'd play around with sort of a yellow background to make that blue stand out. I have a photographic still from the video I've taken and with that and with a rough plan I'm going to go ahead and make a work of art where a dragonfly is taking a damselfly out. The damselfly has been known to be prey to these guys so why not? Okay time to start this work of art. I'm using nibs. I'm using it on illustration board because the ink flows so nicely over illustration board. It's very smooth surfaced paper. Chucking in details with nibs, with fine brushes, whatever it takes. So I'm drawing the dragonfly coming in and whacking that damselfly. The damselfly's abdomen and wings are just flopping all over the place. Putting in lots of fast motion lines, a sort of a kind of explosion line, sort of like a manga comic, trying to get that kind of action in. Now some dynamic orange, which should really make the blue pop because it's a complementary color. Because I'm wanting that blue to really stand out. Now one of the problems I've got here is that the damselfly going over the wings is a bit confusing. So I think I might put the dragonfly wings over top of that. And I think that might sort that out a bit. But it's a bit confusing also because the pond hawk has a green mouth and the damselfly is green. There's a bit of confusion happening there. In fact, 
the whole thing looks confusing. In fact, I don't like it. So now what we're going to do is go into another important part of the creative phase. When you create something, sometimes it fails. Sometimes you question, why do you do this? You sort of think, I'm not even a real artist. I'm no good as an artist. Sometimes you think you're all washed up. Sometimes you're just miserably depressed. And you sort of think, ah, oh, she goes to work in a factory or something. And you just, just want to completely give up. Life seems terrible. Everything seems grey. I just gets to the point where you just sort of think, what's the point of it all? Why why even bother going on? It's 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 it's, it's, it's a fail. I failed as an artist. I'm a complete failure. A complete and utter failure. If you hear a voice within you saying you're not a painter, then by all means, paint boy, and that voice will be silenced. Thanks, Vinso. Back to the drawing board, but in a good way. Now, that piece of work I just did was a bit too complicated, but when I look at the original rough sketch, there's something much more simplistic about it, and you can see the action more. So, what do you do when you fail? You get right back in and start drawing again using a fine liner brush. Fine liner brush has got longer bristles than a normal fine brush, but not too long and you still got a lot of control over it. A little bit of my favorite pencil, a little bit of the aqua brush. We're moving right along. I'm going to chuck in some watercolor now. I'm making the dragonfly grab the damselfly a little bit away from its body from its main thorax and further to the back of the body to save the confusion that I had before. And whereas I love the tail on the damselfly, I'm going to have to sacrifice that and put it underneath the wing so it doesn't cause confusion. Instead of the bright orange, I'm now using sort of a buffy beige color. So I've toned that right back too. So I'm still wanting to get the action, the swishy lines through. In this one, I've spent a lot more detail doing the wings. It's especially fun popping the white highlights on the dragonfly wings. Got the damselfly bent back a bit, but it's not destroying the image of the dragonfly. When you look at it, you still see the dragonfly, then you see the damselfly all bunged up, mangled, as the pond hawk's doing what it does. It's really interesting how a lot of people like dragonflies. You see women wearing dragonfly um, t-shirts, things like that. I don't think any of them know how vicious and savage these little creatures are. Now I'm pushing a bit more colour into the pond hawk to make it stand out a little bit more. Still using my favourite brush, which is a very small fine liner or a rigger's brush. Tail on the pond hawk, they say sometimes yellow. I think from the one I saw it looked more pale white, so I'm just going to leave it a white colour to let it stand out a bit more. If I do it a pale yellow, it might disappear in the background. Now the white lines are again overpowering it, so I'm going over the white lines, trying to match the background colour, just to make them less obvious. But there's a very strong image of this swooshing movement. I know I'm not going to get rid of it all, and I'm relying upon that, so it still looks like it's moving fast and whacking that poor damselfly. And there you have it, the Pond Hawk, killer of the sky. Hey guys, thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Now, one thing that would really help is if you leave a comment, smash the like button. 
not just me, all small YouTubers, it really helps us a lot when you do that. It actually helps get our videos a bit more traction, uh, helps YouTube notice them. So not just me, but any YouTuber that you like, always make a comment, thumbs up, and of course subscribe. Catch you in the next video.